This right here is a classic for good reason. And this recipe, mm, this custard is foolproof. There's no way that you can over bake it or have like a scrambled egg. It's versatile, you can infuse it with anything, tea, herbs, spices, coffee, whatever you like. You can also put like raspberries in the bottom of a deeper dish or hazelnut praline or whatever. This is just foundation of a really simple, classic dessert. We've got silky custard on the bottom, glassy, crispy, crunchy caramel on top. Mmm. Mmm. All right, to prepare our custard base, we're going to add our milk to the pan, along with our sugar. I'm going to add my custard powder and cornstarch together, and the oat milk. So we just want to stir these together. I'm going to create a slurry, so we just want to make sure that there are no lumps in it, because if there are, those lumps will cook out and become like tough bits, lumps in our custard. You also pass through a small sieve. This will make sure there are absolutely no lumps in it. And lucky I did that because I've got one nice lump as well. I want to scrape the seeds and add the vanilla pot to infuse in the milk. So just using a knife, I'm cutting halfway into the pod, not so not all the way down though, some people like to do that as well. Then I'm going to open up the pod, um, use the back of the knife and scrape. So I'm adding those beautiful seeds to our milk to infuse along with the pod. This is just gonna give us an incredible vanilla flavor. Bring those to a simmer. And then to the side I have my lump-free starch mixture. Now I like to use soy milk. You can get some varieties that have an amazing creamy neutral flavor. So once that's been brought to a simmer, I can take out the vanilla pot and actually give that a quick rinse, let it air dry and then use it to make a vanilla powder. So once that has come to a simmer, we can just reduce the heat to a low to medium. And then I'm going to add a little bit of our hot milk mixture and then add all of the uh, starch mix back into the hot milk and then cook it up. So you'll notice that it starts to thicken up. You want to keep stirring this until some bubbles start to come to the surface to really cook out the starch. Starch, if it is uncooked, can you can feel it. So you just want to make sure that that it is cooked through. I mean, looking at this, it is so silky glossy, smooth. You can see some bubbles coming to the surface. Now we just take it off the heat. We can add our coconut oil and whisk it in. Now, what will happen is you might start to see that the texture uh, looks like it's separating as the coconut oil melts very quickly. And we want to keep mixing it until it starts to stick to the edges of the pan. That means that all of the coconut oil has been absorbed into the custard and we're good to go. And pour it into a shallow tray. You can see that it has started to set and we just want a nice thin layer that will cool nice and quickly. And then to avoid having skin that will form and then create lumps in our finished custard, we just want to put something on the surface. This can be a silicon um, baking sheet, but I find that unfortunately um, plastic wrap works best. So seek out a biodegradable one. And then we chill this down in the fridge. To finish our creme brulee, we need our cooled custard, which as you can see is kind of set and uh, I would use the word gelatinous. And now you can use a silicon spatula or a whisk. I think a whisk does a great job of making a beautiful silky custard. I'm just going to 
dollop it in. You can see it is soft. Just grabbing a palette knife and spreading it into our dish. So you can prepare your custard up to two days in advance and having it have it sitting in the fridge like this because once we blow torch it, we want to serve it immediately for the best textured eat. Now to blow torch this, we need some demerara or caster sugar. So about a tablespoon and we're going to just rotate it around to coat the top and get a nice even layer of sugar. So we don't want too much, but we also don't want too little. We want a nice crack when we hit it with a spoon. So you do need a blowtorch for this. I've opted for a slightly larger um, blowtorch than I guess you'd buy in a standard cook shop, but these are available online and in hardware stores. And, and I love these because the flame is so much more intense and closer to what we use in a commercial kitchen. So I don't want a high flame. I want it to be low. And I'm just going to work my way around the outside, working my way in. And you kind of want to go slow to allow the sugar a chance to melt. And you don't want to be afraid of some color, because that color is where the flavor comes from. So we want to blowtorch it slowly, working our way around until it's melted through and we have a nice toasted sugar. All right, let's crack into this. So we want a layer of sugar that is not too thin, but also thick enough that when you hit it with a spoon, it's gonna shatter like crunchy caramel glass. So here we go. silky custard base, this classic, crunchy, crispy, caramelized sugar topping. It is, this is the classic for a reason. 